Let's talk about image and how you can put yourself in the best position to achieve your desired outcomes. Uh, image is how you present yourself, but also how people perceive your presentation. Uh, it's easy to break it down into four simple areas, the ABCs, or in this instance, the ABCDs of image. Let's get started. So the A stands for appearance, and this is probably the most obvious one. This is the one that people see because it's the most visual. Uh, when someone sees you, uh, they're making assessments about you within their first seven seconds uh, before you even open your mouth. Is this someone who's friendly? Is this someone approachable? Is this someone who's a potential threat? Is this someone who's telling me to stay away? All these things are set by your appearance. And appearance can be broken down a little bit further in two main areas, uh, your clothing as well as your personal grooming and hygiene. Now, when people think about clothing, they think about, is this person stylish? Are they wearing the latest fashion? Um, that's only a small portion of your appearance. Um, clothing can break, be broken down in three main areas. Does it fit? Is it well maintained? And does it match the occasion? So let's talk about fit. We talked about being in a social media era where everyone wants to wear the latest fashions and the latest trends, the, having the name brand this or this label or that label. But they sacrifice often how well does it fit. We always practice fit over fashion. So you want to make sure that whichever you're, whatever you're wearing, it fits you well based on your body size type as well as is comfortable. And there, there's a myth. You do not have to sacrifice comfort for style. You can definitely have both. Now, the next area, is it well maintained? And this is how it looks on the outside. Uh, is it clean uh, for certain items? Is it pressed? But also, is it in need of repair because things wear out and may need to be replaced or repaired? And this is important for your outfits, but it's specifically your shoes. Your shoes are the foundation of your outfit. Uh, you're also on your feet uh, quite a bit of the time and you want to make sure that your shoes are comfortable, maintained, and uh, they're also looking nice as well too. Um, they say that shoes are the foundation, and oftentimes this is one of the first things that ladies notice about your outfit. And then, does it match the occasion? You want to make sure your outfit or what you're wearing or what you, is appropriate for what you, where you're going or what type of activity that you're doing. So let's just say you're going to your typical job interview. Probably not a good idea to wear your pajamas or your bed clothes might not send the proper message that you want to send to a potential employer or business partner. Next is, let's just say you're going to a funeral. Probably not a good idea to you going to your typical funeral to wear a clown outfit or a fuzzy bear on most occasions. But you get where I'm going with this. And then let's just say you're going to a sport event. Unless it's an aquatic event, probably not a good idea to uh, wear scuba gear to that type of event. These You all want to make sure that your clothes or your items that you're wearing fit properly, they're well maintained, and they match the occasion. Now let's talk about hygiene and personal grooming. Uh, what does that mean for you? Like, you know, you may have a certain hairstyle, a certain way you groom, but also too, your other hygiene for as you know, teeth being brushed, uh, smell, odors, those types of things. You wanna make sure that you're on point with that because you can have the best outfit, but if your hygiene is on point, it's not gonna deliver the type of message that you wanna deliver. All right, let's go to B. B stands for behavior. Behavior is how you conduct yourself on a personal level as well as how you interact with others. Some people, they call that home training. Now, we all know someone who may not, you, you can't take them anywhere because they don't know how to behave or how to act. And if you don't know someone like that, then it may be it's you. But let's continue. All right, behavior has a, a starts with your manners. And this is just simple things of how you interact with other individuals. Are you someone who's polite? Do you say please and thank you? Do you address someone by their proper name or title? Doctor, Mrs., Mrs., such on and such and so forth. When you're going somewhere, do you wait in line or do you skip the line? Uh, all these types of things are a form of, 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 um, of manners. Now, we could talk about this all day based on the occasion, but you get uh, the gist of that. Now, the next thing is your conscientiousness. How do you conduct yourself on a personal level as well as how you interact with others? Are you someone who shows up on time? Or if you're not gonna be on time, do you let someone know about that? Are you professional Well, when you're conducting yourself? Are you someone who uh, pays their bills on time? Are you someone who um, is courteous to your fellow person? All these things are consciousness, things like are you empathetic? These are things that people see about how you interact and how well or not so well how you treat others. Are you rude? Uh, we all know people like that, or we see people 
not treat people in a, a manner that we may like to be treated in. All right, thirdly is etiquette. And when people think about etiquette, they think of, I'm going to this place or this location, I have to use this spoon, this cup. That's a small portion of etiquette. Unlike manners or in addition to manners, it's more of a thought process, more situation specific. So yes, you have to be, uh, be have a level of understanding of etiquette when you're in those locations, but also business etiquette as far as how you interact in meetings, uh, how you send out emails, such as so forth. Different professions require different levels of etiquette. So there's etiquette in law, etiquette in medicine, and et etiquette in science and engineering, all these types of protocols, protocol based. So we've all seen recently uh, different people in different professions, whether it's the medical industry, the legal industry, even educational, where they did some things that was not part, uh, very good etiquette uh, and it affected them uh, negatively from a, a career standing and profession. So you wanna make sure that your, your etiquette and your overall behavior is on point. Let's go to the C. The C stands for communication. Now, a lot of people break this down in, in, in different areas. Some people go as low as 70%. Some people go as high as 80, 85%. But uh, when it comes to communication, the majority of your communication is gonna be nonverbal. So what does that mean? It's what people see. How's your posture? Are you slouched over? Are you lethargic? Uh, are you smiling? Are you shaking your head? Yes. Are you nodding your head, uh, turning side, saying no like this? Are you, is your handshake firm? Are you smiling? All these things are forms of nonverbal communication. All right, next is tone. Tone is the, the level of volume of the, what you're speaking. So you may say, hey, uh, everybody go outside, it's a fire. Now, if I said it like that, people probably wouldn't move. But if I said, hey, everybody, it's a fire, go outside, now they're gonna take action because my tone indicated a different level of seriousness. And last but not least, probably the least is the words that you say from a verbal standpoint, as well as uh, from a written or digital standpoint, uh, top, uh, typing text, such and so forth. Um, you wanna make sure that you're being cognizant of your words, and especially when it's, although it's least important, when you're using digital medium like text and email, uh, people aren't able to gauge your tone, your or your um, your body language, so they may or may not get uh, get the meaning that you want them to get. And uh, I have young cousins; they use emojis, all these uh, acronyms, IDK, all those types of things. And so you want to be mindful of that when you're communicating with other individuals. Last but not least, D stands for digital footprint. We live in the digital age. So uh, we live in the social media age as well as the camera phone age. And really, we're in an age where you have very little privacy. So because of that, people are gonna see the things that you do. They're gonna hear, uh, see how you uh, treat people. You're gonna see your appearance and they're gonna be able to see and preserve your communication. So you want to be uh, mindful of that. And people think of digital footprint just as in uh, online or social media, but it's also your resumes your business cards, websites, so on and so forth. So uh, you, these are the areas that you want to look at. And when you are incongruent in all those areas, that puts you in a position to put your best foot forward and achieve the outcome, puts you in a better position to achieve the outcomes that you want to achieve. So what are your thoughts on this? How do you feel about your image? How do you feel about these components? How do you, uh, what are some things you do to make sure you're maintaining and you're on point with those areas? Hit the like button, share this out, subscribe. Uh, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of the content uh, that I put out and I look forward to your comments